Hi and welcome to this local contrast enhancer for Adobe Photoshop video. This first one is kind of a quick start guide. We will cover the basic use and the interface. A video about advanced tweaking and masking will follow. Anyway, you can find more info, high res comparisons, downloadable examples on this website. Local Contrast Enhancer comes for both Mac and PC platforms as Photoshop CS4 Panel or Photoshop CS3 Script. It should work with CS2 version as well, but it's not been tested. You can find the CS4 Panel when properly installed under the Window menu, Extensions, here it is. Or for the CS3 version and hopefully CS2 as well under the File, Scripts, Local Contrast Enhancer, here. Now let's focus a bit on the interface. The CS4 version is actually a panel, so it shares with other Photoshop panels the same behavior. It can be collapsed, can be grouped, it has its own icon here. Now let's put it above the layers here. The interface is pretty clean. Basically you have a um, slider with a value. You can drag the slider, you can type directly the value or use these little arrows. Um, the value ranges from 1 to 100 and then you have an extend range checkbox that extends it from 1 to 200. Um, it opens with the default value of 20 you have an apply button and an about button. While the JavaScript version is more or less the same, scripts, local conscious enhancer, same slider from 1 to 200, about button, OK button, and a cancel button. Now let's open a picture and see what happens when we launch the local conscious routine. I have one here from the photographer Roberto Bigano took at Photokina in 2008. Now let's stick with the default 20 pixels value. Um, by the way, the value is in pixels. Let's click the apply button. The routine runs, things happen, and no matter the layer structure you have in the layer palettes, um, the result will be pasted on the top and named accordingly. So this case is um, local contrast enhancer 20 or we've used a 20 pixel value. Let's now compare the original with the result at full screen, 100% zoom. Okay, this is before and this is after. This is before and this is after. Um, here, it's before and this is after. Again, before and after. Let's check the lights here. Before and after. Again, before and after. Then, um, let's say here, before and after. Before and after. Okay, so let's try to understand how it works. Um, this value, the, the radius, is somehow used to define an area in which a contrast adjustment is performed. So we can say that roughly the smaller the radius, the more local the contrast allocation will be. This in the um, more or less 10 to 60 range, but it depends on the picture size. And this one, by the way, is a 12 megapixel picture. Smaller radii, like one or two, can be used to get an effect not equal but similar to Unsharp Mask. Some say superior, but it's a different thing. Uh, while really high radius values, um, like 100 or up to 200, um, as we will see, can lead to very interesting contrast reallocation. So you can basically work with um, mid-range radii or very large ones. Let's move on to another example. 
This one is uh, um, from Roberto's archive, an indoor from L'Aquila, the Italian town where we had a terrible earthquake in 2009. It's a 39 megapixel digital back file, and that's why I'm providing you a file with layers. I've already run the filter of three different radii, as you see here. 20, 60, and 200. Um, it can take a little while to complete the processing, depending on, namely, um, the picture size or the computer performance or the radius value. Anyway, this one is an example of uh, mid-range radius failure, and let's see the why. Well, this is the result of the uh, 20 pixel value, which is pretty unsatisfactory to me. Um, the uh, 60 pixel value is somehow different. It may please you, but to my taste, the 200 pixels value, maybe it's a bit harsh, but it's a better version. And we can always um, lower the opacity to a gentler, uh, I don't know, 60% opacity. And we can now zoom in and see the before and after. Okay, this is before and this is after. You see the better shape of the flower. And now maybe here, this is before and this is after. And now down below on the statue, this is before and this is after. And then again on the floor, This is before, and this is after. Okay, um, now this picture, as is, um, may need some more tweaking. Maybe you would like to have, I don't know, the floor of the 20 pixel version on it, or you'd like to mask the effect, uh, split it, and but this will be the topic of the next video. We've covered the, the basics here. Thank you very much for watching.